Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do play mode tests inside of Unity. So as you can see here, I already have a folder set up called play mode tests. It contains an assembly definition file, or .asm def, and that allows everything in this folder and whatever's nested below to be compiled as its own separate project. So everything in here is going to be built under the play mode tests project. And with this assembly definition file, as we talked about in the unit test video, you can add in assembly definition references. So if you need to reference, let's say, all of the scripts of your game, then you can add in an, a reference to a assembly definition file over here. So you would simply click there and select the one you've set up. So if we take a look at the scripts folder, uh, you can see that one is set up here. You can add one in by doing right click create assembly definition. And so this game scripts assembly definition file uh, will allow this mover script and number machine and any other scripts to be built under the game scripts project. Note that if there is a nested assembly definition uh, file, then all those files and uh, tests and play mode tests will be excluded from this game scripts build. So enough about that. If you want to create a folder for doing play mode tests, what you need to do is go up to window general test runner and then there's play mode over here on the left. If you haven't already created a play mode test folder, there'll be a button here to create that folder. So before you actually set up a test script inside of the folder, there's usually a button there to add in a script to the current folder. But another way you can do it is right clicking, going to create testing and then C sharp test script. So let's take a look at this play mode tests script I've set up for doing play mode tests. Over in the Visual Studio, you can see that based on those three assembly definition files, there are three projects inside of these, the solution, and they will all build independently, of course, referencing and building the dependencies if you add any end. And at least for out of the box in unit unit tests inside of Unity, uh, the script doesn't look a lot different between this play mode test and the one we created in the previous video for just doing a simple unit test. Uh, but what is going to be different here is that because we are running it in the context of a test scene, we're able to do things like game object dot instantiate uh, to create new game objects, add components to those game objects, and check variables on those components, like the transform of a game object. So that would be one example of why you would want a play mode test instead of a unit test. So let's go down this script and talk about what it does and how you can add some of your own play mode tests. So inside of the in unit framework, if you set up a method that has the setup attribute, it will run once uh, before every unit test or unity test in this case. So what this setup is doing is it's creating the game object we want to test and it's adding a mover component to it with all of the defaults. The mover script over here is really simple. It requires that there's a rigid body 2D attached to the game object. And uh, basically, as long as the script is running, it's going to move the position of the game object using the rigid body 2D.move position method in a certain direction multiplied by a, a certain speed. And of course, it factors in the time.delta time, which is the time that has elapsed since the last game frame. You can see over here at the top, you can obviously set the speed or the direction to be whatever you want. And what we're testing for in this script, the unit test script, is two things. One, we want to make sure that the mover comes with the rigid body 2D by default. So you can see in the setup that it adds component mover, but it doesn't make any reference to the rigid body 2D. But over here in the mover script, we can see I have the attribute set require component type of rigid body 2D. So we want to make sure that that is properly being added automatically. So if it's found on the game object using get component rigid body 2D, uh, then assert not null should return that it is in fact not null and the test will pass. And then down here we have another test, which is mover object will move after the game starts. So it checks what the position is at the start of the scene. It waits 0.1 seconds. And then um, we get the position that it's currently at again, and we make sure that those two positions are not equal. If they're equal to each other, then that would imply that the object did not move, which would mean the test failed. But if they are at different positions, 
they assert dot are not equal, then that would imply that the object moved, not necessarily through the mover script, but at least in one way or another. And uh, we don't really have to worry about other possibilities here because this is all being uh, set up with the context of the setup method up here. It's a test screen, there's nothing else on it, and it's an empty game object that only has the mover component and the rigid body 2D attached to it. So uh, we can be pretty sure that this method, if it does move, it's because of the mover script. So without having the play mode testing, what we would normally have to do is actually load up our screen in order to test an object. So here I have one of those game objects that does have the mover script attached here. And the normal way of just loading up your screen and testing would be like this. We hit play and we see if it moves or not, right? So let's do that and we can see, hey, it's moving to the right, exactly like what you would expect. But if we have these play mode tests set up, then we can have it automatically load up a test scene. And if we go to the test runner, uh, we'll be able to run these tests in the context of that empty test scene using only the setup that we have from the setup method. And uh, you can also see tear down at the end. This will destroy the game object that was created and set up every time one of these scripts runs, uh, basically guaranteeing that it is a new object on every single test and not the same one. And honestly, this probably isn't actually necessary, but it's not a bad thing to have in there just in case. So over here in the test runner, if we want to test both of these things without really having to think about it, we can just kind of go up here and tell the basic unit test to run all of the play mode tests. Um, so if you run it up here, you run it up here, it would apply to all of the play mode tests that you've created, even if you have multiple scripts that do separate things. And we can see in here that both of these tests passed. If we run it one more time, you can see that it also loads quite quickly because it's just a basic test scene with nothing else really in there. And uh, we get both tests to pass. So um, just to show that it is in fact working, um, I will make this test fail intentionally. So R not equal position to position, this is set once. So this test should definitely fail and we can hit run all to have that run again as soon as it compiles there. So we'll run this and that test will definitely fail because we're checking the wrong variable. But you can see, was not expecting them to be equal, but they were in fact equal. So that's all for the basics of how you set up play mode tests inside of Unity. If you want to take things a step further, there's a library called Zinject for dependency injection inside of Unity. And the Zinject dependency injection library works really, really good with these tests, whether you're doing unit tests, integration tests, scene tests, or whatever. But hopefully this has helped you guys to understand how to create those play mode tests inside of Unity. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.